Very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to our final day of uh, Singapore Geospatial Week Plus uh, 2020. Uh, we hope you had caught many of our webinars this week and last week and managed to learn something new and gain insights into what's happening in our industry. So without further ado, uh, let me start off with the first session for today. Uh, so we have with us uh, Ms. Jinal, Jinal Fofla, Senior Program Manager of Grab. So she will be uh, delivering a workshop uh, titled Humanitarian Mapping. Uh, mapping for wheelchair accessibility and also mapping for COVID, uh, mapping of healthcare centers, essentials, and so on. So without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, Jinal to uh, start off with the first uh, webinar for today. Uh, uh, Jinal, please. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I think I'll start off uh, without wasting a in any more time. I'm going to share my screen now. And so as uh, you know, as I mentioned that we'll be doing, uh, so we, this uh, webinar is focusing on mapping for wheelchair accessible places and COVID essentials. So one thing I would want to, you know, uh, to, you know, share the agenda of how we're going to spend this hour is one, uh, we'll start with the introduction as to what mapping is, what OpenStreetMap is, and uh, things around that. Assuming that a lot of you folks are, you know, uh, are new to this or are well aware of it. So we'll go through a quick spin of introduction and then followed by, we'll start with the basics of mapping. Um, and then we'll get into photo mapping because both of the things which hold wheelchair accessible places and COVID essentials in common is photo mapping. So I will, I'll, you know, uh, I think there were a few folks who attended one of my talks in the, in the, you know, in the beginning of this, in the last week where I spoke about OSC, which is open street cam. Uh, so there are multiple such uh, imageries that we could ref like use and we could map this by sitting on, you know, in our chairs at home. So without further ado, let's uh, kick start with this and uh, what, like a reminder, please feel free to, uh, please feel free to ask questions uh, in the Q&A. And if there's anything else that uh, you, you know, you'd want to hear from me, please do not hesitate. Uh, another word of caution is that this is ideally a good one for in-person, but this is, we are doing it virtually. So it is going to be hard, but you know, we are going to try our best to answer your questions. And otherwise we can, you know, deep dive into it. You can email me, my email address is right below for, you know, clarification and we can get deep, deeper into it. Uh, so I think the, the other side which I want to uh, thank is, is, you know, the Geospatial Week, like GeoWorks for organizing this amazing virtual conference. I'm, I bet it is extremely hard to get everyone across and, you know, do it so like beautifully and easily such that it makes things so much more, you know, available for people. So I'm so glad. Thank you so much, your works for organizing it. I thought I'm going to miss this conference, but no, thanks so much for it. Um, and then thanks to Grab for giving an opportunity. Uh, I think I, whenever I do these workshops, I get a lot of questions on, you know, why is Grab doing so and all. So I would like to address that in the beginning itself. So for Grab, I think the community or geospatial world is extremely important. Uh, one, it's because, you know, it's maps and things that we are, we are passionate about, but also like, op like OpenStreetMap, which is basically the Wikipedia of map mapping, you know, in layman's terms, uh, is like, you know, a way to reach out to so many, so many different people, like building our local communities, as well as helping it in like, you know, through humanitarian causes and also this is one of the reasons why Grab is so passionate and uh, is always ready to support these initiatives in, you know, in their ways that they can, either be, by being a facilitator or a contributor. So I, I usually start my, you know, thing with what are maps, right? And this is mostly a question and answer thing, but like uh, you can type in if you have a suggestion or a thing, but so what are maps, right? Like, if I ask this question to a child showing a map, they would be like, it's a paper and I can see some water and I can see some land or I can see continents. But if you dive deeper and if you look into how maps have impacted us at this, like, you know, our generation or the present situation, 
we are so dependent on maps for doing everything. We, uh, you know, want to go from one place to another, all of it. But why are they so important? Is because it is a depiction or a pictorial representation of the actual world around us. And that is why finding places are, you know, is made easy. That is why going from one point to another with that directions is made easy. That is why finding something which you are looking for made, is made easy. So this is what I would, you know, suggest that whatever is on the ground, what we see is, you know, bought into forms of paper, phone, tablet, mobile, everything. Uh, and, you know, it's represented this way. And that is why it is important that it's represented, right? Because it's a bummer if you go to a place and it's not the place you actually wanted to go. And this is one of my favorite maps. Uh, this is a plan of Bangalore. So I, I come from Bangalore, India. And this is one of the oldest maps that is there in the in the library where, you know, the city, the core city of Bangalore was, you know, made and this is how this it looks and we can, we can, you know, understand that how important maps were even back then. And now how like because of the technology, how easy it has become to contribute to it. And I think one, and I would love to like spend two minutes on this and, you know, would love to have you all answer, but what is something that you see is different in this map than the usual map that you already see? It's, it's an actual representation of the map, but it is different from the usual thing that we see. I'm, I'm actually looking at the QA box. I mean, the QA uh, window to hope, hoping that you all have, uh, or, or sorry, or the chat box to see if there is anything that you can suggest. All right. Um, so one unique thing about this map is that the map is unusual because you can see the North America and South America is on the right side uh, and Asia and all the other continents are on the left side, which is usually the other way around, right? Like it is the perfect def def like, you know, depiction because, our, you know, Earth is spherical so any side you see but it's just a different way because we're so used to seeing the opposite it is hard to identify and see that oh wow this is also something which is right and uh, you know it's not conventional but it is something which we follow uh to start about with open street map right so this uh, as much as i like we will be deep diving into open street map I will, if you don't have accounts we'll help you create accounts and all of that but this is what it looked almost 15 years back like open open street map is 16 turn 16 last august uh i mean this august uh, uh, and this is what it looked and now there's a lot of change and this is a completely community contributed map it has over six million active or you know registered users and over millions of uh, people across the globe who are contributing and improving the maps with details which it's hard to do otherwise Yeah, sorry, there was a misplaced slide, but this is what it looks, Singapore looks in the map. And those are the trails of, of all the uh, met MRT stations, I believe. Uh, so if I have to look back when it comes to open street map, this is the first mapathon or, or, you know, the event that happened. And it was July 2005, where they all got together and went on a field and they added information. And I just like the, you know, idea behind how much our mapping space has evolved is, is what I'm trying to depict through these slides. And the first data that was added was Europe. Um, that was basis the satellite imagery. And now it has increased. This is only till 20, uh, 31st Jan 2019. And now there are so many more users. Uh, and I think another cause that resonates with all of us and particularly me, this is the only reason or one of the reasons that I joined uh, or got attracted to OpenStreetMap was humanitarian, um, the causes that it supported, the humanitarian causes that it supported, because, you know, as I said, quick access to on-ground information saving lives. Like my personal story here is that, you know, when I was, um, uh, why is there a break in the number? Uh, Thanks, Robin, for this question. So I believe that there has been some times, right, when it it's like there are a number of users who not registered or they decided to go offline. They they basically have gone on, and this is why there's a blip. There's no specific event 
as such associated to it, but this is what it looks like. This is the only reason why there is a blip. Um, uh, so yeah, this was my reason where I started, like it was Nepal earthquake in 2015 when, uh, you know, I, I was not a person who contributed, but I looked and observed the efforts quite closely where, you know, there were mappers across the globe who were, you know, mapping on the spot. There was live imagery, satellite imagery given, and they were mapping places for helicopters to land and, you know, uh, like share relief package, uh, packages or rescue people and things around that. And that has still, you know, stayed in my heart. And I still like, you know, try to contribute or do whatever little we can from, you know, being away. So this is one of the things which is very close to OpenStreetMap, uh, the humanitarian aspect of it. And this is, you know, uh, one of the field map mapping uh, mapathons or initiatives, which was in Africa. There are multiple such initiatives. I will let you know where you can find those, not just specific to Africa or uh, you know, Asia, but it's across the globe. So whatever thought resonates, you can contribute using that. Uh, so initially back then, the tools that were used were to collect GPX traces were these smaller, you know, Garmin's and things around that. And they would have these field papers, which were printed, which you can see on the side of the screen. So people would go, you know, collect GPX traces and mark certain pointers and then come back. And, and then they would come and use their monitors, uh, you know, their computers to add all that information onto the map. Uh, so as I said, they would collect this data, uh, they would upload this. So this is what the GPX traces look like when they are uploaded. I mean, obviously this is huge dense of it, but when you walk around, this is what it would look when, you know, if everyone of you uploaded, then the map would look so much better. And then you can edit it. So ID editor is the editor which we'll also be using. There are multiple other editors which are used. Uh, amongst them, the popular ones are ID and the other is JOSM. Uh, popular, like it, is, it stands for Java OpenStreetMap uh, uh, editor, basically. Uh, that is more of a local system-based editor and a lot of export mappers use it because it comes, it is a little complex tool to handle, but it also gives you more control over your data. But anyone who's starting, I think ID Editor is the best platform because it's platform independent, it is on the web, and it's very easily accessible through, you know, our own, uh, like, web browser from, from the OpenStreetMap org. Um, and then once you're adding this, I think it renders, and this is, uh, this is as simple as it is. And I think a lot of you might have questions that how long does it take to render? Ideally, it does not take as much time, uh, other than if the feature is too big or it takes time to load, then there's, there's, they have their own inter interval to load. But uh, at least within a day, you would be able to see all that you've added. Oops, I'm not sure this it was supposed to be skipped. Okay, let's get to this one. So uh, what are wheelchair accessible places and COVID essential places, right? That is a question that a lot of you folks uh, have in mind. And uh, so something, oh, sorry, to, some, to think about it, uh, you know, especially in times like this, like it has been extremely difficult and, you know, all of us are homebound. Like we are at working from home and doing whatever we can. But the situation demanded us to, you know, be able to access certain places. Like, so one pause that is extremely important is, you know, this world is like, I, I have a friend who is differently abled. And one thing which he says is that, you know, the world is not built for, built for people who are differently abled. It's only for people who, you know, have, are, are perfectly normal in, in, in the normal sense. So this is why I think having, all of these places on the map and making everyone sensitized to the fact that it is not just for people who can, you know, are able to do so, but also for people who are differently able to do so. And the other aspect is COVID essential places. You must be wondering what is, a, is there a segregation around this or, or what? Uh, there's no segregation, but I think that when we were, you know, uh, while this, uh, while the pandemic was, you know, uh, emerging through the world, we realized that there are so many healthcare centers, there are so many clinics, there are so many uh, ATMs and everything which are not, uh, you know, available or not on the map. And it is 
at that juncture, when you want to, the usual places are closed, things get changing. So how do we keep the map up to date with it, but not going out because that's a strict restriction. And that's where the solution, uh, you know, came into place where uh, we added this using this uh, photo imagery. So you must be wondering what is photo imagery? Um, so open street cam is one of the open source uh, platforms, which uh, you, me, anyone can capture the imagery and upload it. And it is released with all the things that are needed for anyone to map on open street map sitting in, in, in their own chairs. So this is why it is important. And I can tell you why is it so different from satellite imagery, because that would be your next question, right? So aerial imagery, uh, will only give you a part of the reality. Like today, all of us are sitting and we are using the aerial imagery. It will tell us, oh, there's a road. I can draw a road. It tells us there's a building. I can draw a building. But to identify what kind of a building is it, to identify if that road is something that is going to help us for, you know, for the wheelchairs to pass through it is extremely hard by just looking into the satellite imagery. And that's where the street level imagery or photo mapping comes into picture. So this is the same junction that we're looking um, on the on on the left side is is a satellite imagery of the same junction and this is what this looks like so you can understand that one is construction you can see different signs you clearly know that there is no way for a wheelchair to you know uh, for a wheelchair or um, any of these to pass or maybe there seems like there is a way here so if you go ahead further ahead we can see more information from it but you can imagine the number of attributes, the number of key features that you can add by just referring to OS, like uh, imagery that's available on the ground versus the satellite imagery. So, and this is, as I said, it's 100% for OpenStreetMap, it's free and open. So either of us can contribute as well as use it using the tools that are there. And this is what our workshop today is focused on. But just to uh, answer to another question that, you know, might come is, you know, what is OSC? or how if you you know if you're not a mapper and you want to just contribute to the imagery you can do that as well you just need to like download the app it's on apple store uh, i mean it's on yeah apple store and android uh, play store where you can download you or you can use your gopro go on a drive or cycle and it records the imagery and you can upload the imagery and after some processing around it so that you know the pi informa pi information does not the get reveal like masking the faces, blurring the faces, name name plates and number plates and all of it. It is made available to OpenStreetMap community where all of us can map and add. And this is what we're going to see today. And as I said, why is it uh, important? Uh, as I said, it only gives a part of reality, but there are so many other things that it comes with. There's community aspect. Uh, there's disaster response. Uh, there's uh, GoPro. There is traffic science, there's so many other things that it comes along with. So let's get started uh, without, so I'm going to give two more minutes or a minute for more questions if anyone has, else I'd request all of you to, you know, click on this link uh, or open uh, basically, you know, it's bit.ly slash geo mapathon. Uh, it will open to a GitHub page. You don't have to register on GitHub. It's, uh, you can still look into the page that is there and it will take you there. So let's uh, i'm going to keep the screen for a little longer until all of you are doing um so one request would be that yes i think you want to hear me uh, thank you so much for putting this on the chat uh i i i think you all want to hear me and understand but i'll also uh, suggest that uh, it'll be good if you can follow these steps you know one after the other and in case you have any trouble feel free to put it in the q a box and i'll try to answer it all right, uh, I'm going to move to the next slide but this. I'm going to come back to this one and we're just going to go to the, the particular table. Yeah. So I, if you are not already there on OpenStreetMap, you can sign up. There is a link also. You just need to click on here and you would be able to sign up. Uh, this is what OpenStreetMap looks like. Um, you have the map wherever you are, uh, if you want, you can click on this button. It will take you to the exact position as you are. Um, otherwise you can go to your favorite place. So you can just search for it um, and figure out that this is the place you want to be in. And yes, that's where you would be. 
Um, and the next thing, I'm just going to give a quick run through of what you need to see and what uh, the things that you'd have to be careful about. Um, there's my messages. Uh, you have there's a like there's a way to communicate with fellow mappers. As I said, it's a community of millions of mappers across the globe. You can reach out to them if you have if you have any questions, or you can reach out if you are not sure about something that they've made. Uh, your profile, your profile basically is what people will see. So it would it would suggest write something about you know maybe what you're mapping, maybe your favorite places, and you know if you have another account. And yeah, you can add friends too. That is um, how is this. Uh, different from onemap.sg. Okay, uh, onemap.sg is is it, it's something that's available, uh, and I feel that it is dedicated to Singapore. And I believe that you know it also you it it refers to OpenStreetMap to some extent. Uh, whereas OpenStreetMap is a global platform. It is not just limited to Asia, or Southeast Asia, or, or Singapore. It is it is for everybody to use. And this data is available in open source, so it's in the ODBL license, so it's shared alike, so you can, you know, anyone can use it for multiple reasons that they like to do. I hope I answered your question. Um, yeah, so you can add friends, you can have people who, you know, reach out to and follow you. So that's another thing. And then you have your settings, which basically, how frequently? The map is updated almost immediately. Uh, as I said in the beginning, so some of the changes which maybe have a higher uh, history or, you know, at the higher level on the tile side, right, like boundaries and borders take some time to update. But most of the features that you put in, uh, it immediately gets updated on the map, but it, it might take a little bit time to render. But if you add right now, your feature one, uh, will be present immediately. So that is why it has to be very well curated and thought through because you do not want to add, you know, any wrong information. And because it's it's a community driven map, so there would be somebody who's already looking into your edit and seeing that okay, this is something which needs to you know look into. But one thing is that when you start mapping, be sure that whatever information you're adding is right, and do not draw caricatures or anything on the map because that is something which is very frowned upon from the community and then there are also admins in the whole of OpenStreetMap who take care of all the other aspects right such that um, uh, you know the like there's this good behavior uh, if there is anything wrong done then they ban your account there's a lot of process around it which also is a volunteer driven thing so if you're interested or want to deep dive this huge uh, library of wikis of which OpenStreetMap communities maintain. You can get information about almost everything. And yeah, so this is where you have your settings. You can, you know, edit your profile and all the things around that. And now you must be wondering that, okay, I made all the edits, where do I find that? So as I showed you in your profile, you have something called my edits. So my edits is the place where you can see, like I've been like, con like I contributed to Cyclone Ampan recently. So it tells you what are the edits and I'll, I'll show you what is a chain set, right? It is also extremely important, but let's not jump the gun. We'll go to it as we need, but this is where whatever edits that you make will be showcased. All right. Okay. Uh, so next we're going to go back to OpenStreetMap and you must be wondering how do I edit, right? So I'm going to go, uh, yeah, I'll, let's go to this location. Yeah, somewhere. So this is probably the neighborhood that I'm familiar with. Uh, so I can, you know, if I have to edit something, I would just go edit with ID and it will open the ID editor that we have to look into. Uh, so I know it's overwhelming, so we'll not directly jump into it. Okay, as an open source, how is the data verified and governed? Uh, thank you for that question. It is, uh, so I feel, so this is a very unique project. So it is completely uh, run by the community. So anything you add, 
you can add it as you want but then there are people as i said there are millions of community members who have their own processes there are tools something which is another open source tool is called osm char which is called open street map chain set analyzer where you can look into your edits um, and uh, you know add uh, verify the edits and do and then imagine right like i live in a neighborhood which is you know uh, i'm very familiar with so you make an edit to it which is not good or bad i will go and you know make that modification or you know flag that user and let the user know but yeah this is how the you know the validation aspect and things have been maintained uh, another question that i've got is can open street map be download for offline or internet uh, use within the company uh good question yes the the uh, map is the planet files are available on on the map uh, like you can download this you can use it but the only thing it comes with is you need to attribute open street map because it's an open street map uh, community contribution that is done and there are licenses that are associated with it so if there is a usage i would you know suggest to look into the odbl license and the licensing wiki to get more information on how to use and all but yes there are a lot of research science like research or data analysts across the globe who are doing certain analysis using this data and deriving useful information but i would suggest on to deep dive and see what are the things that you would have to see when it comes to odbl license and attribution and things around that all right uh thank you these are really great questions um so i'll move back to this uh before so i think now you're familiar with what id is i know it's it's overwhelming it's a lot of information so uh in the interest of time i'm also trying to move a little faster but uh rest assured let's go back to basics and then we'll see if there are more questions then we can deep dive okay so um here's what id looks like but before we step into any of this right you can see a lot a lot of buildings you can see a lot of uh, you know uh, pois and you can see a lot of these but what are these and this would basically take us back to our geometry no our geography geometry class right where we had node then a segment and then a closed area and all of that so it's basically that right um there's a node which is you know has latitude and longitude and um uh basically it's it's the location where it, the place starts or what it is where it is ideally a single entity would become a node so a shop or a poi right a point of interest it could be a cafe near your house it could be uh, you know something which is a single unit that can be identified by a node when it comes to way all your highways right all the ways that are passing footways that are you know passing through your maybe a lobby or your you know you're walking through so those are ways which is a composition of multiple nodes and then area is a closed way so you have multiple nodes but they close at one point and that forms the area a good good example of area would be building when you're trying to tag a building you're going to add building and then nodes around it and close that area and then add that and then something which is relation is a little complex but it is basically saying that any of the three or all the three together can form a relation but a relation refers to some sort of a rule which is governing all the three attributes so a good example for a relation would be the um the traffic lights or the traffic restrictions that you see right it says that you can go from one way to another uh but you, you don't know how can you go there right so this is uh, like so you uh, i was just trying to find the annotation but either ways so you have like a way uh, or for instance here's the way that you can see here's the way and you you are not allowed to go in this direction you're not allowed to go left so there would be a relation between this way there is this node that you see and this way which is a rule that says you can't go left and this is what forms a relation between the three so it is not a physical entity or an attribute but it's something which binds multiple physical attributes it could be all the three it could be any of the two or so 
any combination together into a single relation which basically makes a rule for that thing to you know move ahead so turn restrictions or any of these traffic restrictions are a very good example of relation and one thing is you cannot see relation in a in a thing you have to deep dive into the tag and see if there are any relations so it's invisible but it is binding the three as as it is uh okay uh and then as i said right like all of this is the skeleton but you need to be able to identify so if you see here you can see certain colors you can see certain um uh you can see white you can see orange different kinds of roads you can see that there is um like you know uh there's each way so how like you know all of us are human beings but each of us have a name that helps us identify helps me identify different from another person and this is what the tags which i'm referring to are for these the skeleton or the the thing that you're making right so if you have to look into any of this right if you look into you click on any feature you can see right down uh here which is which says what is it it's highway tertiary lanes uh five lanes backward forward these are all complex features i think it's only once you get used to mapping it's it's something more for expert mappers and it takes time to get used to it but the basic attribute to this is that it is a road uh, and it's it's uh, so roads are having its own nomenclature so it's highway equals tertiary and this is this is the nomenclature we'd have to follow otherwise the system will throw an error and you won't be able to upload that information so for instance if you want to know more about tags you can just click on osm wiki tags and it will take you to you know tags uh the different tags and then you can keep like looking into it and then there's also tags wiki which will help you understand which it is so for instance if you're looking for highway uh you just need to click on highway osm wiki and then there's a dedicated wiki for that which will basically give you all the different attributes and the color that it comes with so you don't have to assign the color as soon as you put the tag when you draw away and you put this tag it will automatically give but there is a way and time to use this information wherever you have to so be very cautious if you're not aware i would refrain you from adding any information unless and until you're sure and also be extra cautious on the fact that whatever information is on osm before deleting do let like you know confirm that there is something that is you know wrong and then you know go ahead and modifying it or reach out to a fellow mapper to you know in order to understand why is this the way it is instead of just deleting uh yeah so this is what a tag and this looks like so before i rush into you know photo mapping or you know introduce you to id editor i would just want to take a pause and ask if there are any questions that you have on any of the things that have uh, you know spoken until now um i have a question you know i'm uh, vanessa from geoworks so yeah. Yeah, um vanessa. How do companies like Grab, for instance, um, mm -hmm. integrate OSM into the own maps that you are building? That's a good question, uh, Anisha. So, as much as I understand, if I'm talking about the company perspective, and not this is not just specific to Grab, right? It it is any any organization, even for my own research, uh, there are APIs. The, that OpenStreetMap provides that you can look into and refer to and add that as a part of your, you know, any map that you want to render. So for instance, if I'm doing a project myself where I want to show this map or, you know, to maybe, maybe the places that I've visited for my vacations. So then I can, obviously there are uh, on top, there are different technology, like different libraries that are available where you can build on top of their map and tiles but ideally it's a game of uh, api so you can call the map api which will render the data you can call the tiles api there are open open tiles.org which will give you the tiles that will help you render the map and you can do it so it is the whole thing of apis and those are available they are well documented so anyone can refer to it if 
if they are you know willing to add map and there are tons of examples of how to do it tutorials of how to do it so it it could be uh, an easy thing to start with. awesome uh, i hope i answered the question right uh, okay oh uh, how there's one more question before we move into the how does osm compare with google maps uh so as much uh, as i think all of you are aware google maps are is a license it is freely available for all of you guys to use but you cannot use the data because it's licensed licensed in the sense it's proprietary information which is specific to google only like if any one of you have to use that data there is a request or there's a requisite or and there are certain things that comes along with it which is what makes osm different from this because osm anyone can contribute to data you can add this information i can add this information and uh, you know it's it's basically like crowdsourcing information right like all of them can add and all of them can use it there is no constraint on it but when it comes down to google map you will be able to add that you are you can only suggest on adding that information but it is them who are controlling what you're adding what you're using how you're using and things around that so that according to me would be one of the major differences when it comes to uh, these two different uh, platforms on a mapper's perspective all right um cool i think should i wait for the next 10 seconds if there are any more questions that are coming okay i think um all of you can look into i'm going to give you an introduction to id editor because this is the one which you would be using going forward and again i want to specify that this is not the only editor that you would be using uh, there are multiple other editors and you can uh, look into multiple other platforms that you can contribute data wise and before i move into id editor another thing since i've been talking a lot about uh, and there's also a task link which is here which you can you know refer to to do a lot of mapathons so that's that's called humanitarian uh, uh it's humanitarian open street map team basically they are one of it's called hot osm so they are these orgs which have multiple such uh tasking like you know for beginners for someone who's just starting to map there are a lot of projects there are a lot of mapping projects that are run and you can participate so one uh, good thing would be called tasking manager so you can just search for it and i'll also link uh, link to it when it, i've also linked to it in there Oops, sorry let's go for tasking manager for osm yeah this is the one it's called tasks.hotosm.org uh, i have the link in that but you can also look into it so this is this has a lot of humanitarian events that you're looking for so you can explore projects you can determine the difficulty level so you can see there are a lot of covid specific projects to for different regions across maybe they are mapping the roads maybe they are mapping uh, this thing so if you have to like think about the impact that it's creating there are a lot of places on on our globe that are not on the map they exist but there are no roads that take us to there and that itself tells that they are not on the map so one of the motivation of this team is to you know have more people into the mapping uh, space have more places like you know so that covid relief or when it comes to vaccinations they would get that you know otherwise there are people who are dwelling and you're not even aware that they are on the like you know they are dwelling so to you know maybe help them reach out to them or share the relief it is really important and there are multiple projects some of them which i am associated or i work closely with was malaria mapping uh, that was specific to south like africa region then there was fgm female genital mutation uh, it is an initiative which is run by a very close friend of mine and uh, you know uh, she has done an amazing work on bringing it and it has impacted lives of so many girls in in africa so you can you know you yourself can run a project if there is a cause that's impacting you here across or anywhere in the world and this is a, a great platform for doing that and it's as simple like you just need to um, let's go to one of these where i'm showing so you have to first log in and that's why it is important for you to have your osm account 
because that is where it is associated to. And once you grant access, you get to see this thing. There's a specific reason why I'm exploring this tool uh, in this session, because it will it is a great tool for anyone who is just starting to map because one, it has instructions of how to do what to do. Uh, if it's uh, what kind of level, if it's like intermediate or advanced level, then maybe you would want to go to a task which is easier and you have ways to you know filter that. Uh, it has, and you can just choose the task you like and just continue or contribute and it will, you, you, it will basically lead you to this and give you specific notes and it's urgent. So you know that this is something which you want to and then you can say map a task and it will pick a random task for you and you can just, uh, okay, it's taking some time to load, I believe. Uh, but yes, it automatically gives you the ID editor within tasking manager. So you don't have to switch a tab and then you can just take a walkthrough, which I would recommend. Like I have been using ID editor for the longest, so it does not give me that option to do. But if you take a walkthrough, it will give you what the things that I'm actually trying to, I'm going to show you while we are you know demoing id editor and then you map as much as you can and once the task is complete you can click on yes and leave a comment or you can click on no it's not complete and just keep it the way it is and go to the next task and once you're done split and then you have your own profile it will tell you how much you've contributed what are the things that you've done and so far so this is what a tasking manager looks like. We will also be using a tasking manager in our this thing. So each country has their own tasking manager or there's a global tasking manager, which is this one. So it's again, an open source thing. So you can always use it on, on for your own thing and, you know, make it for yourself. So there are a lot of uh, communities that have their own tasking manager so that they can have their tasks and, you know, they can op like operate in a much more efficient way. So, yeah, this is what uh, it is. I think it's basically for the humanitarian cause. Uh, so next we're going to go and explore ID. Uh, so ID again has a very similar interface. You can undo, redo, whatever you want. The, the three attributes that I said, this point, line, area. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, this is disabled. If you click on this, it's going to take you to your location. Uh, and I think you can click at least the workshops that I do. I actually tell the participants not to because it'll be like everyone's in the same location, uh, but you can. Then there is something called layers. And this is something which is extremely important for you to understand because um, there are these satellite imageries that you can toggle between such that you can uh, choose the one which you feel is the most accurate for that region. Uh, I think I usually get this question, so I will proactively answer it. Is that where does this imagery come from? There are so many of these. Uh, where does it all come from? Uh, these imagery is something which is donated or distributed on in a, at an open source level, such that it's it's helping people for humanitarian cause and all. And that's why this Bing imagery, Esri, this Mapbox satellite, this Maxar, which used to be DigiGlobe before. And then these are all, uh, these aren't imagery, but these are all layers, which gives you so that you know how it's rendered. It's basically for rendering in case someone wants to understand. So if you look into Bing uh, imagery, something to be very uh, careful about is that these imagery uh, around have a capture. So they don't have a capture date, but they're captured long, long back. Some of them are new, some of them are not. So there are places where you're mapping that they would either suggest you that please use Mapsar, please use Mapbox, please use Bing. But if you're mapping here, be careful on using it because sometimes there's a little bit of offset or there's some clarity. So just refer, look into multiple imagery before adding or removing any information. Uh, yeah, so this is where the imagery comes from. Uh, and then there is overlay, which I would suggest this, this is by default there. If you remove this, it takes away certain names, but this is um, okay. You can control the brightness. If you like it to be brighter, you can keep it brighter. If you want to keep it, you know, a little, uh, make, like what do you say, make it translucent, you can do that and, and things around it. Um, this is with respect to this tab, which is background settings, uh, quotes from there. And then there's something called data. 
which is extremely important because you want to see the data before doing so make sure that this is something that's checked uh, if you uncheck it you can see a clear view of satellite imagery this is what the imagery looks like you will find a lot of clouds in some of them and if you see if i switch between sv2 let's say maxar you can see there's a huge difference on the color the contrast I mean the clarity too so yeah you need you can decide which is the best one for you to use and go from that but yes make sure you turn on the data layer otherwise you might duplicate add duplicate information and that's not that's not a good idea to do and this is where i'm going to come for photo mapping right why is it important and why we can use uh, into adding information that's on the map it could be uh, a cafe that's missing or anything and if you can verify it using this then that's nothing better than this okay so this is these are additional things that you can use but one thing which we can use is the photo photo overlays um there are multiple uh, organizations or um, you know who give this like there's bing street side there's mapillary which is also an organization which you know uh, does street level mapping and there's open street camp which we just spoke about a couple of minutes back so let's click on open street camp and wait for a second or two for it to load and you can see right there are a lot of tiny arrow not arrow like but pointers like things that crop up all you have to do is select one of them so when you click on one of them there's a big image that pops up okay you can expand this image as much as you want you can zoom in zoom out i would suggest you use a mouse because it's easier uh, otherwise you will need to use your trackpad controls to zoom in zoom out which is different from every person to i mean everyone to like system to system so i'll leave that to you but you can zoom in zoom out uh, one caution the images are collected by people like you and me it's either through their dashboard either to the when they're walking or when they have when they're cycling so not all images are great but uh, you know if you feel that there's something that's missing and you want you know and you're going on a stroll then you can just turn on the osc app which is available on play store and ios and you know collect that imagery and upload it and next day it will be or within few days it will be available for you to refer and use so yeah you can see that you know there's something called piyjx so this is something which you can identify uh, there's a you know a bus lane here so you can see that as well and you can see that this is not something which is more of a wheelchair accessible because you feel that there is an elevation so you need to be careful about that um let me go to the next image but if you keep going front you can see you can see that yes there's a road that you can go to and there's a turning here and there's something called orion and stuff like that so here you can see that this road seems like it is accessible for uh, wheelchair like there is a ramp and you don't see that there is any elevation or there's any abrupt uh, you know uh, abrupt signs that they cannot use so what we could do is as i mentioned here you have tags which will allow you to add that information uh, so these are highway and classification but when you're adding uh, a wheelchair accessible place you can just put wheelchair equals yes that i'm showing here and uh, you could have entry step less or step uh, less i would suggest not to go deep dive into this but you can go for wheelchair equals yes because it tells that it allows the full wheelchair to go to that particular place but in case that okay let's go to this example so that we get a fairer understanding uh, so remember that the tag is wheelchair equals yes uh, there are variants there's wheelchair no uh, which by default if you do not add it means it's no so you don't have to add and there's something called wheelchair equals limited so this means that they have some sort of a partial access that you know uh some area of that road or that you know maybe a mall or any place is accessible but others need someone to assist maybe to push or maybe to lift or something like that but we try to like you know to keep it simple and let's just go for wheelchair accessible so if we go here we can see that this particular road seems like it is wheelchair accessible 
and if we go back and look into the imagery we need to also be careful on which side of the road is wheelchair accessible if you deep dive and see this is already added by somebody if you look into it this pavement and it says footway sidewalk and highway footway so what we could do is we could add wheelchair equals yes on this because it seems like it is something which is accessible with uh, everybody so yeah so additional to this particular tag and the fact that i live in this neighborhood i know that this uh, entire stretch of road is uh, wheelchair accessible so what i'm going to do after this is i'm going to click on this and then add a tag here saying wheelchair as i type i will be able to see it and you can have options yes no designated bag and i can just add yes okay it's as simple as that you have a drop down which will give you all the values and choose yes because I, I mean again you have to do a lot more research and in the interest of time i want to ensure that we you know learn all the good practices of uploading data as well so i will go and add but you need to be very careful on identifying if this entire stretch of road is accessible or if it's just till this point right if it's only till this point then yes you need to click on that node as i said node is a single entity and right click and you can see there's an option to disconnect to extract to split you should go for splitting it because once you split it you can get and uh, add this access only to this stretch of road and not the whole stretch right because you want to ensure that it you don't add wrong information so this one also you're going to split so you're not deleting any road you're just making the single road that whole stretch of road into a single road and it has a tag wheelchair equals and add, then add the tag wheelchair equals yes i know this is entire stretch is accessible so i'm going to undo my last two edits and retain my wheelchair equals yes for this entire tag and then while i'm uploading um okay i need to save and it's extremely important to write what did you do in the chain set okay it's extremely important there's a chain set comment which i've already put in when in the, in the doc that you can refer to or in a real life scenario where you're mapping something specific i would write that i the uh, added wheelchair access on this footway okay so that whoever is looking into will know what edit you've made sources yes they automatically take it but other than that if you want to add you can or you, if you have an official doc then you can link it here just uh, uh what do you say share the link here so someone who wants to refer can also refer to it and then another very important feature and then and it also ties back to the question that someone asked that um you know what if, who governs it or who validates all this information is you can click on if you are a new mapper you can click on i would like someone to review my edits and if you click on that there are systems which and there are mappers who voluntarily looks into these edits and you does it and even if you don't click there are people who review your edits so do not hesitate as such uh, to you know uh, reach out to somebody if you're not sure about adding information but this is extremely important because we do not want like there are three things to remember one do not delete existing data if you don't know if you're not sure don't map two uh, always add information or source that you are adding so that everyone anyone who looks into it will help and say that okay this is why you've done so and the third thing is always add a chain set comment it is extremely important do not forget adding the chain set comment and then update this information uh there is no set uh, so i got another question which is how long does it take does it usually take for the edits to be verified uh it depends it depends on the activity of the community members across sometimes it's within a day sometimes it's within it takes some time like i personally in the places that i map i try to look out for edits very often so that i just see if there's something that's you know not right or something it could be a brief review 
or it could be something uh, it could be something specific but other than that it depends on how active the community is and singapore community is extremely active so there would be some of the either review or change if you've added incorrect data and that's why i would suggest that please please ensure that you don't delete any existing information unless and until you're 100% sure it's right add information that you think uh, that you know is valid and you have a source to you know uh, like you source to justify that edit and third always upload a comment so someone will understand what were you trying to do all right and then each of these places have some of these groups that you can uh, be a part of it could be the telegram group and all and it has a lot of communities so like you can reach and everyone is extremely sweet so they're very welcoming so in case you have questions it could be a newbie question or anything you can reach out on all of these uh, different threads you can choose either of the one there are some or the other active community members there but at least asia i think the open street map asia telegram is extremely active which has all the people from experience to newbies so please feel free to join the community it's a amazing experience to be it and uh, super interesting so this is what we spoke about wheelchair accessible places and you must be wondering how do i map essentials right so essential mapping also can be done through this image as i said uh owing to you know you know that this is yamaha so you can you know you obviously one one constraint that comes with this imagery that we are seeing right is to identify the location and the exact location of it because you cannot take this at face value that this is if i'm seeing yamaha here it is exactly at this location i mean in this scenario yes i think yamaha is this particular uh, big building that is there and that's this that they got turn uh somewhere here uh but because there there are normal mobile devices that's used and singapore has a lot of tall buildings there might be variations in the G, like you know the the lat long that it captures because it's the gps and gps signals sometimes are strong sometimes are weak if it's strong then you'll get a very close location but if it's weak then this particular road you might see it somewhere here and i think all of you would have experienced this gps signal right if you're going for a run and if you're tracking yourself you know that when you're running across like a building then the whole gps is all over the place so this is one drawback or something that we have to be cautious and one great example here is here like this one so if you see this uh, not this road but this particular image let's try to deep it doesn't seem like it is here it seems like it's the main road but since there's a gps gps signal bound bounce so so i think some things to notice when you're adding poi or wheelchair wheelchair is usually through the road so it's like a few images and identify when it comes to poi or any restriction or anything specific uh i mean you know health centers if you know you can identify and see that there's a health center try to have a very accurate okay and we have only two more minutes so i'm going to rush this up but uh, I'll, i'll i'll put my email address so if you have questions you can reach out to me or i'm also on open street map so you can you know send me a message on open street map and i'll try my best to you know help you out and also on twitter so anywhere uh, you can just find me and i can you can reach out and we can you know maybe have another mapathon if you all are interested and i hope this isn't that the, the other one is in person but just be very careful on the location where you're adding this information this is a good reference but do not take it with face value you will have to identify the right location so you can take things like you know junction as a as a as a cue you can take this um, okay there's a turn here it does does this image show a turn if it is then yes it's possibly the right location it seems like yes there is a turn in this uh, image so if you go a little far ahead do you see the turn being persistent then you you know the exact location of that image and then add that information uh yes i think this is the quick startup pack i know there's a lot of uh, i mean i wish we could you know do some more hands on mapping but this has all the information or some of the information you need for the folks who are starting uh, learn osm is extremely uh, good it's a good startup pack for everyone who wants to just know more tag and force place where you get information about all the tags that are there on osm and there are lots of them 
so you can uh, you know learn more about it from there and uh, yeah this is this is a quick introduction to a, a task which is a little more complex because it's it's starting for the like you know it's the first time that you all are doing but you can you don't have to start from it you can start from something super basic contribute to one of these open like humanitarian tasks and let you know learn like let people know more about what you can do and other than that you feel free to reach out to me if you have more questions or if you want to set up another uh mapathon for for few folks similar to you or you know you have questions thank you so much uh, i tried my best to complete everything i wanted and uh, and i had in my mind i hope the session was useful to all of you uh thank you so much for this opportunity again to your works like other thanks uh, thanks a ton from grab and my side and hope to see you all soon thank you uh thank you very much uh, junal for that wonderful uh i would say a short workshop but it, i think it is a great uh, introduction to open uh, street map uh for those of you who are very new to mapping uh do check out open street map uh there are a lot of online resources that uh you can uh you can look for um on youtube videos as well and of course uh, do get in touch with jinal uh she is uh conducting a lot of all these uh, workshops uh, as well as mapathons so do look out for the mapathon events uh conducted by grab uh without uh, without further ado let me just uh, give a final thanks to jinal again once again uh, and today just uh, today is the last day of the singapore geospatial week plus uh, 2023 so i hope that uh, uh everyone uh tune in to the rest of uh, our webinars today uh don't miss them out uh with that i would like to end off this uh webinar session and uh, thank you very much uh, for attending thank you thank you jinal thank you so much